Hi everybody, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. Today we want to talk about uh, composition basics for bird photographers. About 10 or 11 points that you should uh, be familiar with and keep in mind in the field when you're taking pictures. This will improve the kind of quality of the pictures that you get and should help you out in your bird photography. You know the old saying is you should not you know, have the bird smack dab in the center of the frame. But if there's some symmetry involved in the image, right? There's some symmetry here with this bird all the way around here. There's some symmetry and the bird is staring at you. So the rule really should be if the bird stares at you, just take the picture. It's going to be OK because any kind of eye contact is just uh, incredible. We've all heard about the rule of thirds. You know, we can see that this bird's about a third of the way in the frame. In reality, as long as the bird is offset to the side, one to the right or the left, it's not going to make any difference. It could be 20% or 40%. Any kind of offset, you know, will, will make it work. Another thing in photography is the uh, golden spiral, and about 40% of people, their eyes will land up in this corner because that's the way we read, and then they'll sort of try to read the frame. And the golden spiral says that they're, they're going to read the frame by going around and then down to the reflection and then off like this. And then here's here's an overlay of, of the spiral and you can see it starts on the bird and then it goes down to the reflection and then it goes off the frame. So that's just another compositional element, something to keep in mind, um, how people read the image and how you can create some nice compositions. It's always important to keep the distance in front of the bird, the direction that they're looking or flying. Uh, that should always be greater than behind the bird. Uh, this bird, he was um, pretty large in the frame. I knew he was going to take off, so what I did was I zoomed out a little bit with my 100-400 lens, and then I made sure that the active sensors were in the center part of the frame because I knew he was going to jump up into the frame, and I call that room to move. Give the birds room to move in the frame, and then also there's plenty of distance in front of him, uh, twice as much or more than behind him, and that will help with your compositional elements. We read from left to right and from top to bottom and this diagonal line along the through the image like that makes it easier for people to read this image. Here I just flipped the image horizontally and it's it's opposite. Our our eyes go straight to the beak and the eye. And that's the focal point, but it's just a little bit easier or I think it's a little bit better to have them kind of start up here and go down and look at the whole bird, you know, concentrate on the eye a little bit and then and then go off there. It just gives them a way to to read the image a little bit better. The human mind thinks in patterns and in odd numbers and three, five or seven birds is always going to look better than uh, two, four or six birds. And so think about that when you're making a composition. Um, if you can get all the birds to have their wings up or down, it's also a little bit better too in the composition, right? Here's the Caspian turn. I cleaned up this image in Photoshop. I got rid of the stuff in the background that I thought was distracting and that people would kind of, uh, you know, pay attention to rather than the bird and, and the small fish in his mouth. And then here is the, uh, the image that I cleaned up in Photoshop in one of the last tutorials. Just makes for a cleaner, more professional, uh, nicer looking image. Well, in landscape photography or portrait photography, sometimes they talk about framing where they have trees or something on the side and then the focal points in the middle. Well, we want to pay attention to the edges because we don't want, uh, you know, stuff like this kind of hanging out in the edges of the image and distracting people. So there's a difference between framing an image and then having clutter on the edges. All I did to clean up this image was I went into Photoshop, straightened it a little bit and just cloned everything out. And so now I have a nice clean image and it, it looks OK. The bird should be about one third of the real estate in the image. And so this uh, Western Meadowlark is probably a little bit larger than that. But you get the idea. The bird should be substantially large in the picture. There should be some white space or open space in the, in the image. But about a third is a, is, is, is a good size. If you get much closer, you're going to you know end up being too tight on the bird. Here we have a center focused bird. But sometimes this is what you have to do. You're stuck in this because you know that the bird's going to fly away if you get any closer. So what I do is I shoot center focus because the lenses are the sharpest down the center and then I'll take the picture and then I know recompose and kind of crop it in uh, post processing so to, to get the image that I want. And here's the image that I settled on. I like the bird up in the corner 
Small birds should always go up in the corner. If they're birds in flight, put them up above. If they're birds on the ground, maybe in the lower. This works because the rocks kind of form these natural lines along, uh, you know, pointing out of the frame. And so our eyes land on the bird and then the rocks kind of pull the eye off the frame. And so that's a, a very nice composition. We never want to clip the wings or the feet of the birds. If we do clip the feet, or uh, you know, we want to make sure that we have uh, enough room down at the bottom where the feet would be. I don't like this. If I was up just a little bit higher, I could have gotten his foot in there, and that would have been a nice composition. His other foot is right in here. And birds rest like this because the bare parts get really cold. They have a higher body temperature than us, and so their parts, their bare parts get cold a lot faster than we would, we would think. Well, this is what happens, right? Uh, the best thing you can do when this happens to you is, is laugh because not only did I uh, clip a lot of the bird, I only, I only got his feet. What bird is this? Well, it's got black legs and yellow feet, so that makes it a snowy eagle. Hey, if you like what I'm doing on my channel, uh, hit the subscribe button below. Like this as well and share it on social media. You can always see my workshops over at timboyerphotography.com. I really appreciate you watching this, so thanks a lot. Bye-bye.